I make the argument that <clears throat> uh, the welfare state in Europe, as it emerged after the war, was in fact a, an extension and perhaps a fulfillment of precisely this idea of popular sovereignty and the idea of citizens as having rights. The universal rights that belong to citizens. Now this, as we all know, in, was inaugurated in the late 18th century moment of the French Revolution and the American Revolution and so on. And through the 19th century, this became, you know, the rights were expanded. By the uh, 1950s, the idea was that there would be universal guarantees of certain basic and fundamental rights. And these are not just the political right to vote or the eco economic right uh, to negotiate and have trade unions and so on, but social rights. That is to say a right to, uh, to a habitation, a, 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 a right to housing that is, a, a right to a livelihood a right to access to education, a right to health. All of these were seen to be uh, part of elements of the universal rights that citizens had. So this is the universalization of the idea that people had rights and the state must guarantee those rights. Uh, so that's the welfare state moment. And then we know what happens in, in the West, most of the Western countries, uh, Western Europe and, and North America, uh, of the withdrawal from the, uh, the welfare state. The, the critique of the welfare state is something that was inefficient, uh, that was wasteful, uh, and so on, and perhaps even not necessarily egalitarian. Uh, and so you had the neoliberal critique 